Chicago. It's your turn. And if they if they saying that she a man, then I really know who I'm talking about. Let's get to it. Right now, two people are recovering after a shooting in Princeton Park, including an 11 year old who was inside a home and hit by a stray bullet. We are told this happened just after 630 last night on 95th near Princeton. Police say someone approached a 24 year old man and shot him. He is in the hospital in critical condition, but just a block away, a bullet hit that 11 year old in the leg. He's expected to recover from his injuries. There have been no arrests. So an 11 year old, let's, let's revisit this. Let's, now let's go two back. people are recovering. After an 11 year old, we got to address what's going on out here in these streets, y'all. An 11 year old, a block away from a shooting in Chicago, got hit with a stray bullet. An 11 year old in Chicago hit with a stray bullet. That means you just walking down the street in the daytime, walking down the street in the daytime, having a good time, playing hopscotch, trying to find some snow. Shout out to Mr. DJ. I appreciate you on Cash App, my friend. <laughs> having a good time. And then you just get, you get a burn, a burning sensation in your shoulder or your arm or your leg. And you can't even explain what it is. You think it's a bee sting, but then it starts hurting even more. And then you start getting short of breath. And maybe you run into the house to try to get to your parents and say, oh, my God, I think I got stung by a bee. Anton, I got stung by a bee. It's a gunfight happening a block away. You just so happen to get hit. Driving down the street, you see a lot of the houses, and some of them might have a bullet hole here and there. That's a random bullet hole. It wasn't intended for that house. They was just shooting. You know how they shoot like this instead of shooting like this? Because they in the wild, wild west. A random bullet just hit your kid. What do you do about it? You don't know who did it. You don't know who, what, when, where, why, and how, but a random bullet in January of the new year, just hit your 11 year old kid. What do you do about it? And breaking this morning, a man is in the hospital right now after he tried to get away from two people who were carjacking him in Jefferson Park. Yes, yeah, CBS 2's Mugo Adigwe is live at Lutheran General Hospital where the man is being treated right now. Mugo. Yeah, good morning to you both. So just yesterday morning, we told you about an attempted carjacking where an Uber driver was left in critical condition after being shot in the chest. Well, today we're talking about yet another attempted carjacking. But in this case, the victim is luckily expected to be OK. Let's get you the video of that scene. In this video, you can see this white Ford SUV here with some serious front end damage. Police say this is the car the victim, a 38 year old man, was driving. They tell us he was going north northbound on Central just before midnight when two armed male suspects tried to stop him and take his car. And that is when the victim accelerated and then crashed into a guardrail near Goodman and Central in the Jefferson Park neighborhood. We should note here this location is less than two miles away from Edgebrook, where police say a man was pistol whipped and actually carjacked just yesterday morning. That also involved two armed male suspects. Right now, police have not said if the two incidents are connected, but in that case and in this attempted carjacking we're telling you about, police say they are still looking for the suspects, but again. Can we bring in the cavalry yet or no? Nah? Can we bring in the cavalry yet or no? Nah? People keep telling you that, hey, we need to go back into the hood and talk to these young guys and save them from themselves. You can go back into the hood if you want to, you fool. They see you as green. They see you as an opportunity. They're going to follow you from home. They're going to put an air tag on your car under your license plate to find out where you live, and they're going to run up in your spot. That's, that's the new play. That's the new play. The new play is that they following people to try to figure out where the luxury car is at. Not only are they going to take your stuff right there at the gas station as you stop at the stop sign, there's some hoods that you can't even stop at the stop sign. 
Don't even stop at the red light. Don't even stop at the red light. Did you know that they going over into the luxury stores, into the good parts? Because it's not even in the hood no more. It's everywhere. They going over to the luxury stores or they finding out exactly. Look, the valet guy yesterday, yesterday said Anton. Because I got, I, you know, you run into the same valet guys because you go to the same spots over and over again. And so they start to become familiar with you and stuff like that. He said, Anton, don't put all of your keys. Don't put all of your keys. Don't get all of your keys to the valet guy. I said, what? He said, yeah. When you go to other places, he said, here you may be safe because we know you. He said, but what's starting to happen and what people are starting to do because they don't know who they necessarily hiring until after they hire them. He said, what's happening is people are leaving their whole keys instead of just taking that one key fob off and they leaving it at the valet person and they not locking up they, they glove compartment or they armrest where it got the, you know, the lock in. And so when these people get in these luxury cars, they can pull up your stuff on the screen or you need to put your car in valet mode. I said, what are they doing? He said, they looking up your information and then they taking copies of y'all keys, not my keys. He said, they take copies of people's keys and then eventually they find out where they live and they try to go in there and they try to rob them or they go in there and try to break in when they know that they're not home. I said, really? He said, yeah, he said, it's unfortunate because you shouldn't have to think about this. You know, we should live in a society where it's normal. He warned me. He gave me a heads up. He said, we, we should live in a society where it's normal for people to not have to think about the ways that criminals is trying to get at them. He said, yeah, but you got to put your car in valet mode. You got to make sure that you only give them the key. You got to set your settings, lock your stuff and all of that, and make sure that they don't find out where you live if you go into certain places because they're they making duplicates of your keys and then they're going over in people's houses. See, Trap and Slay, you said you never heard of this. Oh, my God. Because people that aren't criminals don't think about criminal activity. We don't think about that. You know what we do? We live our lives like regular human beings. Not aware, not knowing what's happening, and then we got to react to what happens to us because the criminals is always one step ahead of us. I did not know that. I did not know that until he broke that down to me. That is the first thing that I, first time that I've ever heard this in my entire life. First time that I've ever heard this in my entire life is that they taking your keys, the rest of the keys, and then they're duplicating your home keys duplicating your home keys and then they going over to y'all house because they know where y'all live based off of where y'all GPS and stuff is. Yeah, man, it's a thing. It's a real thing. So be very, very careful out here in these streets. Be very, very careful out here in these streets. The convenience store owner tells me she is angry and frustrated. This morning she came under fire after robbers ransacked her business for the second time in just four days. At V's convenience store at the corner of 61st and Everhart, the damage is clear. Robbers leaving behind a shattered front door after taking cash registers. Store owner Vanessa Harris was alerted to the break in and caught them in the act early this morning. Some of them fired shots at her and she fired back. I was kind of nervous thinking like, is they finna shoot again? But when I realized he did it. Can we give a moment of silence for them eyelashes though? I know that she the victim and we don't victim shame over here at the Millionaire Morning Show. But can we can we really stop and acknowledge the eyelashes? I know she got her face on and she did her makeup and she got her nice, uh, you know, coat on and all of that. And she's the victim. She's the convenient sore victim. And these people are robbing her stuff. Y'all robbing people that look like y'all and then y'all acting like y'all really for the community. You're robbing people that look like y'all. Listen, you're robbing people that look like y'all, and then you're saying it's for the community. But I just want to take a moment of silence for the eyelashes. Okay, let's get back to making sure that we get these criminals. <laughs> we want to get these criminals off the streets. Go ahead, ma'am. As a scare shot, and they ran all at the store, I just fired back. And two more ran out on foot. This is the second time in four days Harris has been robbed. The first time was on New Year's Eve overnight. 
This is surveillance video from that incident showing several people going through her cash registers. I'm losing so much being on this corner. Um, I'm Somebody said this woman got a thousand dollar jacket on but living in the ghetto. How do you know she live in the ghetto? She's the store owner. Y'all so quick to be ugly towards people. She is the victim. How you gonna look at her jacket and say that she automatically live in a hood just because she black? She is the store owner. She's the victim. They shot at her or made a shot and then she shot back and she's saying that her, her store, her convenience store has been hit multiple different times. Now, I will hold you accountable for your eyelashes, but y'all can't automatically say that you live in. I know she got on eyelashes, so I'm looking at her eyelashes. You can't just automatically assume that she live in a hood just because she got a convenience store or she got a nice jacket on. Shout out to the jacket and shout out to you, baby girl, for doing the right thing, opening up your store, and you should not be having to suffer through people breaking in your stuff. I'm closing up. I got some of my customers complaining now about me closing at 5, 36 o'clock, but it's only due to my safety. This morning's break in putting Harris over the edge as this time shots were fired. She believes she may have injured one of the robbers as they got away in a white sedan. I'm pretty for sure I did. If they didn't, they was lucky. Got to do what I got to do. I mean, uh, unfortunately, this ain't what I want to do. I don't want no death on my conscience, but they get ridiculous. Harris says she has a concealed carry license and police took her gun as protocol while they investigate. She's been in business here in the Woodlawn neighborhood for three years, selling food and coffee, but says this is traumatizing. It's not easy running a business, you know? So I, I'm really frustrated. I'm really frustrated and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the police get involved. I... No, 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 no. Hold your people accountable. Hold your legislators accountable for creating a safety act and making it a safe space for criminals to be able to operate. No, no, no. The same way that y'all want to hold us accountable for saying that our culture is so awesome and we need to hold on to it. Hold your people, the very ones that y'all celebrate are the very ones that's traumatizing you, breaking into your stuff, causing more damage than they, need, than they can even steal. Don't y'all know that y'all probably not even going to get nothing but a bag of chips when you come in there and you tear down a $3,000 glass door that they're going to have to replace in the morning that they can't even get insurance for because the neighborhood is so bad. So they come in, they pour money into your community when everybody leave out because you rioted and tore up and you said that, you didn't want the business owners in there, so y'all rioted and tore up the neighborhood. You finally got some people to invest in your neighborhood that look like you, right? You wanted representation based off of what you look like. I think the jacket brand is Moose Knuckles or something like that. If I'm not mistaken, it's like Moose Knuckles. It's really dope. It's really dope. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I actually seen a stuff. It's kind of like Canada Goose, um, Montclair. They make jackets like that. It's a dope jacket. But they finally came in and they started investing in y'all stuff and y'all gonna steal from them too. So I'm tired of hearing. I'm tired of hearing about how you supporting your own and all of this stuff. Everybody is for themselves now.